Well, round 19 in Supercoach is definitely posing a few more dramas than I'd say 13 and 16 did. Obviously, with Kohler being out, Luttrell obviously wasn't going to play anyway, but Nico Hines as well. It's a little can be a little bit of a frustrating week for some, especially if you're lacking on the trades front, that's for sure. But yeah, personally, myself here with 16 means I can, can go a little bit harder there in uh in this week and, and obviously try to get a really really big score and that's going to be my goal in this one and yeah i'm going to give you a few options as to if you are going to use a couple of trades where you might might want to use it and where some of the upside is this week because it's definitely a week where you can make some ranks if you get some of the top scorers of the week and in the hooking position probably isn't one of those spots so coruscant got a 90 last week so showing some of his upside and then Jaden Braley there, the two guys I currently have. And Braley, I'm not too excited about long-term. Obviously, Starling, someone you could plug and play. Braley's also just easy to, to have in that slot. And, you know, try not to play on a week-to-week basis, but especially off the bench there. And you're looking at a couple of the hookers that are available this week. It's really just Damian Cook is the guy you might want to look at. And then you probably look to Watson from the week after. At 677K, he's someone I really would be targeting come round 20 for you know throughout the rest of the the season but you do see cook there as someone that you can have for the entirety of the year along with api coruscant so very very easy selections and then read marnie from next week the front row forward slot i think it's the one you'll probably want to target next week because when you look at that position there you've got mitch barnett who's super expensive at the moment but absolutely laughable to see adam finnell blake at 562k he's obviously had a really really tough run of games they're averaging 49 he's past 360.8 the past five games there and at 560k is an absolute steal and and he's someone i will be clearly targeting next week as a guy that can have a cracking little run there and you know plays every game up until that round 27 bye you've got him as a, a really solid one you're obviously looking at all of the top guys here and debellin comes to you know comes to the the top of the list here with stefano which shows that the front row forward position is pretty shocking, that's for sure. And then you get down to Payne Haas here with a obviously a low lower total points than some of these guys just because of the you know the lack of games that he's played through that origin period, obviously. And at 701k for him, he's probably you know the other guy on the list. You get him for 140k more expensive than that of Adam Fennell Blake, and he's going to be someone that's pretty highly sought after come next week. And you've still got Terrell May there at 685K who's doing great things. So Mitch Barnett, Adam Fennell Blake, if you're holding Terrell and Josh Curran, that works well. And then it's Payne Haas. So either of those guys, and none of them are you know, too exciting for this week, that's for sure. So you know, if you're holding on to guys like Jensen or Willison like myself, then they're a hold for this week and you can decide come round 20 on those guys there. And there's a few cheaper guys in there with Daniel Saifidi as one of them. You could go for Sipley, who scored you know, well enough last week. Nathan Brown's doing some fun things. He's in the 2RF position though. So yeah, if you're looking at, um, yeah, if you're looking at Sipley and these types of guys at 48, he you know, went up 16.6K at 330K. You should be able to hold his spot in that side as well. If you're looking to the 2RF, you've got Fafita, who's the number one target, clear as day. The other guys that I've got there playing, Fermor, Plath, and Kaipis Paul, you could definitely uh, give and go on that one. Not a not a bunch of guys that you should be too excited about buying, especially with Plath at nine now. I think that hurts his obviously hurts his running game there for sure. But if you are looking at guys over the next few weeks, that's why I'm leaving it in this section rather than just the players playing in 19. Is just to get a bit of an idea of who you might want to be targeting come you know the next few weeks and Fafita's the clear top dog and then it's Angus Crichton second so he's someone that you could look to target either in round 20 if he backs up or round 21 given he's the second best scorer in the position Hamole Olakawatu at 70 average he is the next on the list there so he's the second available after Fafita that I'd be targeting this week he has lost a fair bit of cash as well, given he had that injury affected one. And down to 604K is absolutely wild. So he's a clear target for myself and he should be for a lot of you guys this week as well. Keon Kolomatangi is 706. So you do have to pay an extra 100K for him over Ola Kawatu, but that's just due to the recent incredible form that Keon's been rolling through. So he's an X on the list, but just have to pay that bit more for him. I do think Cam McInnes is not a bad shout at all, but you know, at 588k compared to that of Britton Nicara, who's had a really good you know, three or four game stretch there, and he's up to 706 as well. So if you're picking between him and Keon Kolomatangi, I would pick Keon right now, just because Nicara doesn't have Hines, 
and Keon plays every single game from here on out, whether it's going to be on the edge or in this 13 sort of hybrid role that you've got there. So they're the main guys you would target. Jacob Preston will be back next week, and he's an interesting one for sure. The next one on the list really is, is Ryan Madison. So he came, came in with a pretty solid 64 this week, and he's the cheaper guy at 479 that could do a really good job for your side. If you're looking for a cash out in the 2RF position, then Charlie Geimer is the player on that one, 204K. And uh, yeah, should be able to do a really solid job for you. John Bateman's really cheap now at 489. So keep him in mind as well. If you want someone cheaper that plays the next couple of weeks, probably wouldn't go for Samuel Afanu now with uh, you know, guys like Madison cheaper than, uh, than that for sure. So yeah, they're the big sort of targets in that 2RF position. You see there, Charlie at 204.3K. So yeah, there's enough, there's enough action there for sure. And Olakowatu, Madison, these types of guys I'll be looking to target this week. And yeah, you've got guys like Smithies that could take the fall, that's for sure, and, and use some further trades from there. The halfback position is an interesting one. You can move things around a little bit, basically. Like in my team, I could go Plath down to 5'8", Brown up to half. But if you're looking for a half straight out, it is absolutely dire straights right now. Obviously, you got Tyron Wishart, who's been crushing. He's up to 654. But guys that play this week, it's Cody, it's Cody Walker, it's Kieran Foran. And it's Braden Trindle. There's not much else there uh, available and in a really good spot heading into this round 19 clash. So don't get excited about too many of them. Dylan Brown should take a more you know focal role this week. But outside of that, not a great section to be looking to buy. And it's really only Cleary next week that you should be targeting. And then guys like DCE, 600K, are pretty solid as well. If you're looking at um, yeah, that type of range there for sure. Mitch Moses at 660, coming off a bit of a low one. But... Clear he's not too hard to get to. He's actually slightly cheaper than Jerome Luai right now, which is absolutely wild. But let's get to the 5'8 position. And Jaden Campbell, a very, very interesting pick this week. 622K. He's got the best average of all these 5'8s. It's not even close, but he also has only played six games. So if you want someone as a like-for-like -like replacement there in the 5'8 position or the fullback position, the Jane Campbell is going to be your guy. Comes up against Para this week, and he's obviously coming off a really, really good game there and uh, could definitely do that again. So he's the one that stands out along with, obviously, Galvin. I wouldn't be buying Galvin again. I'd go for Jaden Campbell for some upside there. You know, 100, had 170 last time he he, uh, he had a game there. But Galvin, Brown, all easy holds in that position. And then Jack Whiten, you could obviously target him. Still a 430K. But if you're going to go Whiten, maybe you just go for a Will Price down there at center wing. But in 5'8", if you want someone cheaper, he would be the play if uh, if that's the way you're going. And obviously, Trindle's not too bad either, but I would prefer Jack Whiten in that scenario. For the center wing, Garrick, a very, very big target, I think, this week is 646. If you haven't got him yet, he's the first on this list of players in my team. Greg Marzu at 581 now, getting a little bit more expensive. And uh, yeah, he's missing... Missing all the big dogs this week, so it might be harder for him to score. Aiken just solid, I think a solid hold in 2RF, in, in the center wing and 2RF in the super coach, I should say, compared to that in fantasy. You got Iro and Asako just kind of doing their job. Iro, I think you can get closer to a sell, especially if you want to hold this week. You could sell the week after easily on that front. But if you were to look at selling him, there's a few guys on this list and a lot of them aren't playing this week. So we've got, you know, to oh, we've got, Lomax, we've got Tom Young, all of these guys that are yeah, terrific options at the top, as I said, with Ruben Garrick as well. Will Price is the cheap guy at 345k. He's a yeah, very interesting prospect, and you potentially have like a Brimson back this week. So you can see here, there's not a lot of uh, available options for this week coming up, that's for sure. So Will Price, if you needed to go a little bit cheaper, he is the play. Blaze Salangi out to 585k, which is incredible. So yeah, you could easily sell him next week after... All the cracking efforts that, that he's gone through. I probably wouldn't buy Ronaldo, even though he's at 449 now. The Sharks aren't playing very well, and, and he's just not getting that ball. And especially with um, yeah, Nico out as well, I don't think that helps him at all. Greg there, as I said, 580K. He's a solid one still. But um, yeah, I think if you're going down in the center wing, it's probably Will Price at that cheaper price this week, no pun intended. And then, yeah, Ruben Garrick is the big... Big find in there. And then obviously, if you're looking to the fullback position, I've got Teddy and Drinkwater myself. And very, very interesting. You've got Jaden Campbell you can have a plug at. And then I think the only other option really is, is Tom Trebojevic. You've got those two guys there. Garrick, you can obviously plug in fullback or in center wing. And if you're still holding, um, yeah, Trey Fuller, sweet. But uh, yeah, Will Price, you can plug down there as well. 
I think it's between those two guys. If you are bringing in a fullback, and I'm potentially looking at, you know, moving on from Drinkwater this week, just so I can get another dynamic scorer in that of, of Jaden Campbell or in that of Tom Turbo. So we do we see Tommy come back and obviously picked up a 45 on the weekend there, and that drops his price a little bit. But we do see him, you know, he has one ton against the Knights. He's got the Titans and then the Roosters the following week there. But, you know, we saw he just, he never really broke broke free this year so far. He went, you know, 90, 92 and 76, the two games before he got injured. He picked up a 45 at center, not doing too much on the weekend, which means you could probably buy it, get him a little bit cheaper next week if you wanted to. But with him in this situation where, he comes up against the Knights who are absolutely decimated in the in the outside backs. He could easily go nuts this week and, and it's definitely one of those plays that could pay off and is one of those ones that you um yeah, you could look back on at the end of the season and go, Wow, I wish I did that or I'm so glad I did that. Um you know, you know, he obviously has some a tough match coming up against the Roosters. He loves playing against the Titans, we know that. So yeah, he's a fun one along with Jaden Campbell as well. So there you go. That's uh Probably all we need to say there. You've got actually Jai Gray's probably the other one, only other one there who has the 5 8 and the uh, fullback tag. So if you wanted to grab him at that cheaper price, that uh, could work out okay as well. But outside of that, I think we'll um, we'll leave it there for, for this video, guys. The round 19 by hold sell. It's obviously one where I think you can make up some good ranks this week. You could also fall behind for sure if you, you know, don't have the full 13 or something like that. I, I'm going to try and launch into it myself. I'm just trying to work out the best combination because... Right now, I'm short one in front row forward and I'm short one in fullback. And if I did decide to make three trades but not trade in, in the front row forward or the fullback position, I would have extras. Like I'd probably have a Braley sitting there without the reserve tag on and stuff like that. So have a look at that, guys. If you if you have 17 players or 16, whatever, 15 players in your start out of the starting 17 with reserves and everything on, it won't take your uh, auto emergency but if you, you, know, you have 10 players and then one of them's an auto emergency, then it would take that. So very, very different there in that one. But that's end this video. Thank you so much for being here, guys. And I uh, hope you have a cracking day. Catch it in the trades video.